And this is Jets FM on the OFN as we continue to preview the New York Jets 2021 season with episode seven, the defensive line. Jeff Ulbrich will be coaching the defense for Coach Sala. And Ulbrich comes over from Atlanta where he was linebacker coach for the past six seasons. Defensive line coach is Aaron Whitecotton, a nine-year NFL assistant. And Whitecotton, one of his jobs will be to coach up the very talented Quinn and Williams. And naturally, if we're going to talk about the Jets defensive line, that's where we begin. Williams, the third overall pick in 2019, showed marked improvement in season two with 55 tackles, 14 quarterback hits, 10 tackles for loss, and seven sacks over just 13 games. The fun-loving Williams has immense talent that is just scratching the surface. And the decision by the new staff with the new scheme to play him at the three-tech should unleash the very best of his abilities, including the type of interior penetration that should allow the Jets to apply constant interior pressure to complement an outside pass rush. The main issue with Williams has been health. He has played in 26 of a possible 32 games, and last season, uh, neck and concussion injuries uh, forced him to end his season after 13 games. Then he began OTAs this offseason, breaking his foot, uh, even though a uh, word is that he should be ready early on during training camp. Lining up next to Williams is a very underrated elite run defender, Foley Fadokasi. Fadokasi has become one of the top interior run defenders in football following a breakout campaign that included a career-high eight starts and 42 tackles, as well as adding 31% snaps on special teams. By the end of the 2021 season, the Jets' defense might possess the top defensive tackle duo in the game. Joining Fats and Williams in the interior of the Jets' defense is newcomer Sheldon Rankins. Just five years ago, Rankins was the 12th overall selection in the 2016 NFL Draft. His best year occurred in 2018 when he set career highs in tackles with 40, sacks with 8, and quarterback hits with 15. But injuries have really been the headline story for Rankins in his career at this point. He broke his fibula during training camp as a rookie and uh, missed the first seven games in 2016. After dominating the 2018 season, Rankins tore his Achilles during a January playoff game in 2019. Since then, Rankins went on to injure his ankle week 14 in 2019, missed the final three games of the regular season, including the playoff loss to Minnesota. Then, in 2020, he missed four games with an MCL sprain. Rankins talked in April about how he's feeling. Yeah, well, uh, to touch on the first part, uh, I'm 100% healthy. You know, I think uh, I feel like I'm able to do all the things I could do before, you know, and more, uh, you know, which is a blessing because honestly, at, at one point throughout the entire, you know, rehabilitation process for, for both legs, you know, th there were times where I began to doubt whether I would be able to, to, to do all those things again. But, uh, you know, I, I can stand here. Uh, and honestly say that, you know, I'm good to go and I, and I feel like I can do, you know, any and everything on the field I need to do to be successful. Sheldon Rankins has clearly proved that when he's healthy, he's one of the top defensive tackles in the game. So now all the Jets staff and fans can collectively do is cross their fingers and hope that he remains healthy. Another new defensive lineman acquired this offseason for the New York Jets is here to provide an outside rush game that this franchise has not seen around these parts for quite a long time. Following a career-high 11 starts and 723 snaps in 2020 that helped him lead all NFL defensive linemen with 32 quarterback hits, Carl Lawson cashed in with the Jets and will be the primary edge rusher for Robert Salas and Jeff Ulbrich's new defense. Early reports are promising on Lawson. 
Not only does he look physically fit, strong, and explosive, but he's showing a willing interest in learning the new Jets defensive front scheme. Next up is another young, talented player on the rise, John Franklin Myers. As our lad's draft guide profile put it, a physical gem who moves as well as most edge rushers in this class at a chiseled 283 pounds. He explodes off the snap, is an aggressive player who will pursue sideline to sideline, knows how to finish, and is a sure tackler. After being taken in the fourth round in 2018 with the Rams, Myers was active for all 16 regular season games and even had this strip sack in the Super Bowl. But Myers was surprisingly cut at training camp just before the 2019 season to a deep Rams rotation. The Jets took advantage and signed him shortly thereafter. Myers was placed on IR for all of the 2019 season, though, but returned in 2020 playing 15 games with 13 quarterback hits and three sacks on 500 snaps. Besides Carl Lawson and Sheldon Rankins, the Jets signed two additional defensive linemen in free agency, nine-year vet Vinny Curry and ex-49er Ronald Blair. Curry played eight of his nine seasons with the Eagles as a second-round pick by Philly in 2012. The 33-year-old edge rusher has played in 123 games, totaling 32 and a half career sacks, while averaging 410 snaps a season since becoming part of a regular rotation by his second year in 2013. Blair was a fifth-round pick by San Francisco in 2016 and started to break out two years later with a career-high 36 tackles, 14 quarterback hits, and five and a half sacks in front of the glistening eyes of Robert Sala. Unfortunately, while enjoying an even better season in 2019, Blair tore his ACL Week 10, missed the final seven regular season games, including the run in the playoffs through to the Super Bowl, and ended up never playing for the 49ers again. Two homegrown young defenders are looking for their full-on breakout seasons in Kyle Phillips and Nathan Shepard. Phillips was the Jets' prized college free agent signing of 2019. As a rookie, he led all defensive linemen with 49% snaps and did his best damage against the run. An ankle injury in Week 7 last season, though, forced him to miss the last nine games. Phillips will start training camp on the pup list as he continues his rehab from surgery. Shepard is a former D2 defender, so his ascension as a pro has expectedly taken a bit longer. Shepard has played in 39 games in three seasons with eight starts so far, while adding 27% snaps on specials last season. I think our lad's draft profile on Shepard put it best. Outstanding bulk, good athletic ability with speed, change of direction, explosiveness, and balance. Overall, Shepard may be lacking in fundamentals and mental processing, but has outstanding pro physical potential. Now it's up to Shepard. Uh, to prove with these new coaches whether or not he just belongs or whether he has what it takes to be a difference maker. So four young players remain on this report for us to cover. Two from last year's draft class and two from this year's rookie class. And we're going to start with the player with the highest upside, Jabari Zuniga. But durability issues that plagued them in college have returned to the pros. Zuniga injured his quad during training camp last year, uh, was placed on IR until week eight, and uh, really just didn't get an opportunity to play much with just 103 snaps. Uh, but don't forget, uh, Zuniga ran a 4640 at the combine, which is really fast. Matter of fact, second fastest for all defensive linemen at the combine. And uh, this is a player who played 42 productive games over four years for a very good SEC program. Bryce Huff, meanwhile, played 14 games as an undrafted rookie for the Jets last season. And uh, he totaled 16 tackles, four quarterback hits, and two sacks over 295 snaps. 
Jonathan Marshall was taken in the sixth round in this year's draft. And the staff uh, really likes his get off at the line of scrimmage, as well as his passion for the game. Uh, what really helped his cause, uh, he had a good pro day. Uh, he showed some really good strength and speed for the position. And now the trick with Marshall, though, is talking about a guy that played nose tackle for uh, most of the last couple of seasons of his college career, and that is uh, out of position for where the Jets are going to line him up and really what is uh, more beneficial as far as his playing style, which will make him a better player and a better fit uh, in the pros. Um, but that's uh, going to be something that we're not going to really see until training camp and preseason games, uh, but still going to be difficult to project at this point. And keep in mind, you know, with a deep group of linemen uh, to contend with for those last uh, couple of spots, it's going to be awfully hard for Marshall to find room on this year's 53 man roster. That means he's going to have to knock off someone like uh, Phillips or Zaniga, uh, you know, maybe even a shepherd. And I just don't, see that happening. That's why the practice squad seems to make the most sense early in year one. Hamilcar Rashad Jr. Uh, is another player that's going to have an uphill battle to make the final 53-man roster. Uh, you're looking at the Jets' top college free agent signing, though, uh, for defensive linemen, and, uh, and maybe even for the whole roster for 2021. Uh, but the big mystery uh, with Rashad is going to be what Rashad Jr. are we going to get? Uh, we're going to get the one that produced 22 and a half tackles for loss, which led the nation in 2019. Uh, he also had 14 and a half sacks, which was a team record that year. Uh, or are we going to get the player that had no sacks in 2020? And uh, for whatever the reason, uh, there's been talk about it being he gained too much weight. He wanted to get bigger and he lost his speed. Uh, whatever, whatever the case, you know, this professional coaching staff's going to get to him. And, uh, and, 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 and maybe it's the scheme change that'll do him well as uh, do him well too. But the fact is uh, you're looking at at least somebody that the Jets could project as, you know, a really good, maybe a pass rush specialist type of guy. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just take a look at Vinnie Curry. I think Vinnie Curry's had a pretty good career being that type of player. All right, so that's it for the defensive line group for uh, the 2021 preview uh, here, episode seven, uh, as the New York Jets, I hate to sound like a broken record, but the New York Jets uh, seem to have some pretty good depth. And it's going to be fun covering the defensive line. I think, like I said with the offensive line report, I think it's going to be really fun covering both units, the offensive line and the defensive line, especially with all the competition uh, that both units are going to be uh, going up against. So should be a lot of fun. Now, I have, as far as locks making the defensive line, I have uh, seven. Because, again, uh, nine to ten is what we're going to see make the team. Uh, Quinn and Williams, Falaronzo, uh, Rankins are definite locks uh, in the interior. Lawson, Myers, Curry, and Blair are locks on the edge. And yes, there's no way, I'm telling you right now, that Ronald Blair is not making this team if he's healthy. Salah loves the kid. So that's seven. So that leaves two to three players. Okay? Now, you have Shepard. Uh, who if and if I had to really make the prediction now, I would say Shepard's going to make it. I think Zuniga's going to make it, and I say Huff's going to make it. But also, this goes to what we talked about uh, with the offensive line yesterday. Well, do you do you open up an extra roster spot for an offensive lineman uh, or not? Because chances are the Jets aren't going to add an extra offensive lineman and an extra defensive lineman. So maybe that's why these battles are going to be very interesting how it could cancel itself out, one of these players. Um, but here's how I see it happening also, is that Phillips would then maybe start the season on some kind of injury report. You know, maybe they could kind of just keep kicking that down the road somehow uh, because injuries are going to happen. Who knows? Maybe you just need more time to figure things out, you know, with these players, maybe get a couple of regular season games to really find out what you got, that kind of deal. Um, so I, that's going to be my prediction. If there's going to be 10 players, 
Now, if there's going to be nine, then it really gets tough. Because again, with Zuniga, Huff, and Shepard, maybe what you see is, is Zuniga and Shepard make it. And then Huff, practice squad, and, and hope that he doesn't get picked up, that, that type of deal. Or of course, maybe there's an opportunity for them to kind of hold on to him in the practice squad. Uh, but if Phillips all of a sudden is healthy in the next week or two, as we're doing this show, like in day two of training camp, wow, that's why I'm saying there's pretty good depth uh, as far as a potential trade. Uh, but with uh, Nathan Shepard being a third round draft pick, you might be able to pick up a fourth if you're lucky. Uh, but I would probably say a fifth or a sixth uh, to be more likely. So just like we talked about with the Doga as the one guy that I could see if you, if there was going to be a trade and be able to accomplish something with a draft pick, I thought a Doga would be the one guy the Jets could trade and get a halfway decent pick with. And I, I would say Shepard would be the guy on uh, defense, on the defensive end, a defensive line for the Jets, if, if that's where they're going to go. I'm sure they want to keep Shepard because the kid uh, is just, he's got a lot of talent. Anybody from Division Two needs some time. Then he had the PED suspension. You have a new staff in place. And if this staff falls in love with him, and I could see them falling in love with the shepherd or the exact opposite. They may go, oh, dad, this guy is just not for us. So that's, you know, we don't know this. I'm just making a guess. I, I think he's very talented, uh, but who am I? Right. So, uh, but look, either way, it's going to be real interesting to find out how it all goes down as far as the remaining uh, depth spots on this team. Uh, this is why I've said for weeks and really even when the Jets made the move and I talked about this in the draft guide with our lads, I just think Marshall's going to end up, he's destined for the practice squad. I think Rashad is destined for the practice squad. Huff can make the team. Uh, and I think Huff's another guy that this staff might really like. And I was really impressed with Huff in limited snaps last year as an undrafted rookie. So you never know what new staffs and new schemes are going to make out of these talented college football players. And that's what the Jets have. But uh, we'll find out. It'll be a lot of fun uh, to keep an eye on it. And, and, I, and I really do hope that we're not guessing on Zaniga. Because maybe Zaniga is a guy that gets traded and not Shepard. You know, for him being um, a pretty high draft pick as well. So maybe Zaniga is the guy. Maybe the staff comes in and goes, you know what? Yeah, this is just uh, this is just not working out. And, you know, they're, they're looking at the injuries and, and maybe they're just not seeing enough progress and it's just too deep and they don't want to risk losing some of these other talented players and expose them because of uh, Zuniga and his ongoing injury uh, situation. So I hope he stays healthy. He's very talented. He's got really good upside. Uh, but uh, that's going to be the thing to keep an eye on during training camp and, and, and up until the regular season or cut day is does Jabari Zuniga stay healthy? He cannot miss time. If he misses time, he could be the one that goes. And uh, we'll follow it all the way through, so it should be interesting. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for Episode 7, the defensive uh, line, and it's a good defensive line, and it has the ability to be very good. Uh, when I talk about some of these other units, eh, you know, we're kind of happy about the depth and we're kind of projecting players and we're kind of being a little optimistic because I think we can be at this point. Well, who isn't, right? But this defensive line, this is, this is good. These guys are good. And if these guys stay healthy, and again, I'm talking not just about Zaniga, you know, I'm talking about Rankins, you know, if, if, if this, and, and of course, Quinn Williams, I mean, he's got to play. But if this group can stay healthy, they can, without a doubt, be one of the best four-man fronts in football. And there's no doubt in my mind about that, but got to stay healthy. And we'll see if uh, they can uh, accomplish that goal because uh, health is always uh, a determining factor with NFL teams because the, the, the talent is just so competitive. All right, so episode eight coming up, linebackers. The linebacking unit, not as important as the defensive line on this defense. And, of course, the secondary is going to be crazy to go over. I believe the number is between five and six of how many players the Jets will probably keep at the linebacker position. So uh, we won't have 13 or 12 
linebackers to go over, but we will go over the jet linebacker core with our next episode, episode eight. We'll uh, follow up the defense with the secondary after that. Uh, and then we'll wrap up all of our previews with the special teams unit. So thanks for tuning in to the Jets FM on EOFN, a preview of the New York Jets 2021 season. We'll see you next time.